Hi, this is Michael again. I just sort of give you a bit of a rundown on uh, how to actually set the unit up. Uh, just a, a, a brief rundown. I won't go into too much detail, but uh, just to show how I how I did some setting up with the one that I fitted to a Piper Cup not uh, too long ago and um, had uh, good success with it. But uh, what it is, I'm using the black unit here. This is the the top of the range uh, from RCC SKJ. Like I said, it's uh, distributed by Offstar Models. And uh, they have all the option, optional components, uh, switches and the like that uh, can actually work with these units as well. Now what I'll do, or what I like to do is to use a multimeter and just check to make sure when I connect a battery, and the batteries I'll be using will be 1200, uh, uh, sorry, 1200 milliamp, uh, 7.2 volts, uh, just nickel metal hydride, just for the testing purposes only. So uh, what I'll do, I'll just plug in the battery, just one battery for now, that'll do, that's all we need. And uh, I'll just check the uh, voltage to the receiver itself. I just don't want to go and uh, blow the receiver up. So there we go, we're getting around about uh, 4.5 uh, to uh, um, 5 volts, so everything's pretty stable on that, so there's no worries there at all. Uh, the other thing, I, what I'll also do is check the uh, the voltage, well I have already checked the voltage of the batteries, but another way you can do it is by using the uh, optional switch. And uh, to do that, all you need to do is plug the switch in, turn it on, and that tells me that I have uh, 7.8 volts actually at the uh, going into the unit from uh, one battery. So uh, that's pretty right, pretty okay there. As I said in the demonstrations I had previously, that little yellow switch or yellow button here, push it in, that tells me that going out to the actual uh, re, uh, servo, sorry, uh, we're looking around about 5.2 to 5.25 volts. Uh, that can be adjusted, and I'll, I'll demonstrate that a little bit later on. So I'll remove the switch. We'll leave the battery plugged in. Uh, sorry, I'll remove the battery for this for the purposes of this. But um, what I'll do now is uh, set up the uh, actual receiver. And just show you how how I would uh, set it up. First thing I would do would be to plug in the uh, standard wires. And what I think you'll find will be a lot easier is to um, just plug it into the uh, receiver first. So you've got number one on the receiver. That's just a standard plug, uh, as you can see here. The ones with just the actual uh, signal line, we don't put them in just just yet. What I do then is uh, put another um, standard lead in. Uh, as you can see, I just make sure I get the uh, polarities right before I uh, push the unit in. Just plug it in like so, push it down, everything's fine there. Then what I look at doing is just plugging in the, uh, the other leads here. And I won't plug them all in, I'll just uh, use a couple just to uh, demonstrate. So. Make sure we get it the right way. Signal line, as you as you can see, is the on this unit plugged in here. So you've got one lead there. We have uh, another lead here on uh, number four. So just make sure I get it in the right the right way. And uh, we have another lead here on number five. So that's all plugged into the receiver. Now you can put the receiver in that way, this way, it's whatever uh, you feel your own preference, doesn't really matter, it's not real critical at uh, that point. Okay, what you do now, as you can see you've got your little Futaba tab set up here, and we plug that into number one. There we go there. Another standard lead, we plug that into number two. Then we just use our other leads with the uh, each with one wire. As I said, with the little uh, tab on there, it makes it quite easy to make sure you get it in the right way on on this unit anyway. So it's quite uh, uh, user friendly in that regard. So with number three, just make sure you get your colouring right as well. Four and five. For the purpose of this, I'm not going to panic too much about the colouring, but it, but like I said, uh, one from 
the output on one part out of your servo into the unit, uh, you really need to make sure you match it up. But just for demonstration purposes, all I want to do is to show how you can plug it in, uh, get it looking tidy, then uh, put your servos in and then set, uh, set up your voltage. The other thing what I do then, just get your wiring, just make it look uh, reasonably tidy, don't uh, try and um, make, uh, put, crumple it in too much, but push it across and that will hold it and support it. Uh, like I said, if you're putting in your model you may have to uh, concentrate a little bit more on getting it uh, set up right. Then what I look at doing is getting the servos. So we'll just plug in at uh, 1 and 2 on uh, this case. Okay, 1 and uh, 2. And there we have uh, our servos connected. What you would look at doing next would be to plug the switch in. As I said, you can put your standard switch in, not a problem. But uh, what I'll do is just to, for demonstration purposes, I'll plug in the, uh, the switch with the um, digital readout. There we go there. So that's all connected up. So we've got our servos in, the receiver's all connected up. Uh, we don't have a CDI ignition, I'm not worried uh, too much about that at the moment, just for these, these purposes. Uh, then it's just a case of uh, plugging the batteries in. One battery in, switch is already on, I've turned off now. Plug the second battery in, and there it is all, all connected up.